so I, j I could just do with a show of hands for who I'm actually dealing with today. I don't want to um, teach you to suck eggs or patronise you or go far too quickly. Um, so how many academic staff have we got here? I love this because the academic staff have to put their hands up. Yay. Thank you for that. Uh, how many external guests have we got, i.e. not students? Okay, brilliant, thank you. Great, for, great to see you. Uh, how many students have we got? I recognise a few faces. Lovely. Okay. Um, so, independent games industry then. Um, lots of exciting things happening in the region. Um, lots of things bubbling under. And there's some big implications for developers across uh, computing, computer science, and a whole series of other um, areas that really could, really could ben benefit from some of the things that are coming on stream for us. Um, so what I'd said I was going to talk about was the perceived value of games development. Obviously, historically, games development hasn't necessarily had a, a great track record. Um, I did a, a little talk to 30 school kids the other day, 13 to 14 year olds. There's no one here from South Dartmoor Community College, is there? Ah, <laughs> you're going to love this one then. Um, I asked for a show of hands for who's played Black Ops, which is obviously an 18 rated first person shooter. And all of their hands shot up, every single one of them. I asked them, how many of these students have prestiged? Have any of you prestiged? Getting a few nods. Okay, so how long do you think that took you in, in human hours? A couple of weeks? A couple of weeks flat out? A couple of weeks, three or four hours a day? Something like that? Okay, so it's a reasonable amount of time. So for a 13, 14 year old child to be able to develop the skills and manipulation of a character, understand the context of what's happening, have the reaction times, um, that's a fairly significant skill set. Um, and they, I, I would argue they're probably putting four or five hours a night in for, for two or three weeks. Um, at least, at least. Um, but there's significant opportunities for gamification and tangential learning. So, so how many of you understand the concept of gamification? It's been around for some years. Anybody hazard any guesses, make suggestions? Absolutely. Yeah, so you, so you build in motivations and rewards, you put inference challenges, logical challenges, you have some kind of scoring system, you basically turn, turn a, a learning opportunity or a training session into a game so the learner doesn't necessarily get tied down with processes and they just learn. Um, so tangential learning, anyone has a guess on tangential learning? Absolutely, yes. So, for example, games developers might put in the name of a mythical place or a character from history, and the argument goes that um, you may be exposed to characters and entities within the game world, and at a later date, you're going to follow up on that. And then, uh, I guess, in terms of um, all the internet technologies that are available at the moment, gamification might be extending your brand with an app, with a mini-game, with some kind of reward system built into your product, um, using social networking and a whole series of other web-based web applications. Um, experiential design? Anyone care to hazard a guess or contribute on that one? Yes, yeah, so creating an experience that, um, that, that, that is based on uh, a learning process or gives you some kind of real-world connection. Um, okay. So UK recognises the source of games innovation. Um, what's interesting at the moment is there's definitely a, a demand for indie and mainstream console development. Um, at the same time, um, senior speakers from the games industry will lament the skills gap. Um, serious concern there's a skills gap in terms of the mainstream commercial sector. Certainly for AAA studios um, looking for specific programming abilities. And the recruiters will basically say they would take a maths graduate over a computer science graduate or a, a developer because they can teach somebody to program, but they can't teach somebody complex maths concepts necessarily. Um, slightly disheartening, um, and I don't think it's necessarily the case, but it's certainly one, something that we should take note of uh, in, in terms of the training and the education that we provide. At the same time, as a counter to that, the indie sector is evolving rapidly. Um, so we've got lots of examples to kind of put. The logos on the side obviously are um, 
belong, belong to the brand owners or the services. I've used logos to, to give you some visual cues. So if you want to follow up on any of these points or drill down in any depth, you've just got a little cue so you can you tack in. But they're not my logos. Um, so uh, just to credit my sources on this. Gamer Sutra, obviously, is a classic source, a well-established source, and covers both the commercial sector and the independent game sector. Skillset is effectively the accrediting body um, in the UK um, and has very respectable um, players from the games industry basically advising. Um, we're not skill set accredited, but I believe we have enough in our cross-mix of undergraduate programs to become skill set accredited. So our undergraduate course is a balance of computer science, mainstream computer science topics, um, highly transferable computing and IT, and of course a core of commercial development and indie development. Um, so it's quite a high expectation. I think it's a tough course. Um, and it's, it's in its first year. Um, it's been running as a final stage for a number of years. Um, the reason I'm flagging it is because it's, it's quite unusual. It's quite unusual that in that it's specifically trying to address the skills gap. And our external examiners have been quite impressed at the level that we've been able to go to to try and um, meet that um, demand for graduates, but also provide opportunities for new developers through the program. Um, so if we wind this back a little bit, does um, Bill Atkinson ring any bells, people? Anyone remember Bill Atkinson? Anybody remember the Miller brothers? Um, there's an old argument that goes, um, you know, in terms of developers, do you need Miller brothers or Atkinsons? Um, so there was a, a very early product that came out on the Apple platform which was called Hypercard. So it took the model of an adventure story where you jump from page 17 to page 23, back to page 16, and effectively have different content on each page with different interactions. So it took the model of a book, um, very simple to script, very simple to put quite dynamic content together. Um, the Miller Brothers uh, became Cyan Software and developed the Myst series of games. Arguably, uh, some people would say they're not a game, they're an illuminated peep show with cool dollops of graphics in reward for exploring the environments. Um, however, the smart move was perhaps developing a platform that allowed user-generated content. So if we're all familiar with user-generated content, this is a very old concept. Um, so Hypercard was, was fantastic at offering, offering your average user the ability to create very sophisticated content in a very simple way. We see this model re re reappearing every, every, every set, so 10 years, every cycle. There's a whole wave of new tools, um, platforms, and portals that allow this. So at the moment, there's Congregate, which is targeting indie developers, or the 13- and 14-year-old children in their bedrooms who aren't playing Black Ops, but are maybe using stencil works or other products that allow them to deliver applications to iOS or Android devices without any coding whatsoever. Um, this could be perceived as a threat by developers who are doing it the hard way or doing it properly, um, but there are certainly tools out there that do allow people to put things together very quickly and very efficiently. Um, and I guess this is partly following this, this model of do you want to be Atkinson's or do you want to be Miller Brothers? Um, at the same time, who are we serving with these products or these platforms? Are we looking for the players or the brand owners? So the smart money might say, serve the brand owner. Look at the market opportunity for the product or the application that reinforces the value of the brand. And then the established brand will sell your application, deliver your product for you. Um, so the developer doesn't have to get involved in all the complex stuff about marketing and that side of things. At the same time, we've seen some fa fantastic examples of serving the players. So anybody familiar with Minecraft? So Minecraft is a classic example of an alpha. It was developed and released with a loyal base, a loyal user base of players who also became developers, who then built a series of add-ons and connectivity and additional functionality for the product. And some of them were then snapped up as developers. And then a company was formed, and then a product was released, and so on. So this debate goes on as to whether we should serve players or brand owners, certainly in the independent sector. Um, then we have this iDeploy. Um, snap, crackle, and pop, which I guess I'm alluding to the fact that um, over breakfast children can be putting together products that can be deployed to devices. And this is, um, this is the case. 
Um, I know a number of uh, uh, teenagers, certainly, and in the 13 to 14 year old bracket who have an online persona, and you would be very surprised if you met them to realize that they're so high or so high. And they've put out a few products, and they've got a congregate rating of 3.5, and, and they've got a Jay's Games rating of 4.2, and they're competing with some indie games that are very well financed. Um, so as part of this sort of iDeploy frameworks that exist, there's obviously ad revenue. So there's a big incentive. Um, so one of the things that we're pushing on the course is um, earn while you learn. So our first years uh, will be very quickly, while they're learning to code properly on other modules, will be developing applications to try and compete with the 13 year and 14 year old children that are snapping at their heels, um, which I think is a nice challenge. And at the same time, we also have iFridge. Um, this is obviously a made-up word, but I think you can put I pretty much in front of anything now, and we all know what it means. Uh, the Internet of Things is an old idea, um, but it's been resurrected every few years. How can we manifest this Internet of Things? And again, I would say this is a very significant opportunity for developers on whatever platform, whatever device, whatever sector you're working in, um, that the uh, thingification is, is a very significant opportunity. Um, so the Google ADK, anyone familiar with Google ADK? One hand goes up, and I'm glad it's a student. Um, so the Google ADK basically allows you to connect any um, Android device to any other device, effectively. It gives you the hardware I.O. Um, and a number of other opportunities. So the thingification, or the iFridge with the barcode reader, so you can put something in the fridge and it scans it and it tells you what it is and it generates your shopping list and it tells you that you're maybe going to be obese if you continue in that direction and gives you lots of healthy tips, hooks into a website, plans your day. All of that sort of thing would be very easy to develop now. It just takes somebody to do it. Um, so I've, I'd like to kind of put forward a vision that um, I've been in a privileged position as an academic to trial for a number of years. And the vision was basically build a great game to grow a company. So I have a module where students come on with the delusion that they're going to be building a game. But actually, as a byproduct of building a game, what they're actually doing is building a company. Um, and as a series of um, logical steps to enable that to actually happen and, and give you some evidence to say that it does actually work, um, I would probably cherry pick a team from this activity every year and then try and showcase them and put them in a situation where they have to hit the ground running like Mad Dog Commandos just as they did when they were wasting time playing a games product when they were 13 and 14 years old. So they have to adapt very quickly to a commercial environment. So we've been very fortunate to have some contacts at London Expo. London Expo, if you don't know, is a huge entertainment industry event, uh, 30 to 40,000 people over three days. Um, for the last five years, I've put a student team on a five by five square meter stand with a product they developed in 14 weeks for a 20 credit module. Um, quite often, we've been opposite Atari or next to Nintendo, um, and that's that's quite a reality check for new developers who are trying to compete with the big boys, as it were. Um, quite often, what happens is they get quite a lot of respect and recognition for taking that level of risk. Um, usually, they've actually on the journey to the venue, they've realized a number of things that they could have done a lot better that will be revealed to a very large audience, so they tend to work extremely hard to do things properly. Um, at the same time, we've been able to push them through London Expo to onto European Awards, so we've been build building our European network. So European Awards recognize mobile applications, web applications, animation, 3D design, games products, um, usability, and productivity tools, and a whole series of other categories. And I think it's really important that we as educators in the sector or business people in the sector understand those opportunities and can actually either recruit talent from there or encourage our own talent to submit um, and get that recognition. Um, European Awards are held in Salzburg, which was the uh, European city of design with a huge venture capital investment to bootstrap the economy in Salzburg. Um, there's also the Indie Games Challenge and more locally in the university, the Business Ideas Challenge. And again, we've had School of Computing students have won the Business Ideas Challenge over a number of years. And it's normally the small production teams that have done it. And they've been basically building a game to grow a company. So they've understood the context of their application and they've been able to put a really good business case together and secure some funding. So 
I guess the logical step on from that would be to go through something like the Blitz One Up campaign. So it's an independent studio, very well-known studio in the UK, who have running, got government funding to run um, bootstrapping for independent developers. Um, but that's another story. So on top of the vision, we obviously have to have a strategy. Um, so the strategy has been to generate startups to grow in industry. So if there weren't the jobs there in the first place, we wanted to, to, to basically contribute to the growth of that industry. Um, in order to do that, clearly we have to address the skills gap. Um, a mechanism to enable that is obviously social networks. Um, if we're doing that as a byproduct, we can create placements and graduate opportunities. Um, obviously, for an awareness raising or for to build these collaborations, you need some kind of events and activities that pull people together. So, the London Expo that we've been using, uh, the Europe Awards that we've been using, all help to raise the profile of independent developers and put them on a European stage. Um, the fact that people are put in that position also allows them to secure investment. So our business idea is challenge internally within the university, proof of concept funding. We've had a number of successes through proof of concept funding. Um, and also external VCs or venture capitalists have actually invested um, in some of the graduate startups that have been created through this process. So to name but a few, and these, go, these are probably representative of the 10 years. Um, special Moves. Special Moves have currently got a web apps student employed on placement. Um, Sticky.co.uk, uh, Sticky won some significant investment from MTV while he was a student in the final year through a pitch that he did for an undergraduate module. Uh, Player 3, currently we have a computing games development student as a placement at Player 3 and the, we've had a wonderful comment back that this, this particular student lost his uh, student tag within three days and is now doing client facing work and delivering products for the company. Um, and we could go on and spend a lot more time gloating over these examples. But just, just to say that it, the, the model works, the vision has been productive, and the reality now is that we've got to the stage where rather than having to ship our, export our students to Europe or over to um, London Expo, which obviously we'll continue to do, that we have an event in Plymouth. Um, and I thought I'd take the opportunity to make you aware of this event in Plymouth as well. So last year... Xplay 2010, this was a little panel that we ran in the Guild Hall with a view to identifying how many lo local developers there were with an interest in the independent games sector. We thought we'd maybe get 20, 30, 40 people turn up. So we put a panel together. We had representation from the industry, from Blitz. We had two of the graduate companies, so Special Moves came down from London. Ella Romanos, who's the managing director of Remode up at the Tamar Science Park, was on the panel. I was invited to be on the panel and there were two um, owners of portals, web-based portals that are delivering a series of different products and applications. We had 250 people turn up to the event, um, and on the back of that we ran schools workshops, the panel and the network from that. As a result of that, we've been able to put a monthly game jam together, and that's been quite interesting because the developers that came out of the woodwork for the X-Play 2010 um, we've identified a whole series of people that we had no idea were in Plymouth. Um, obviously, I wouldn't want to go and start naming people. They might not want to be named. Um, but we have a, a number of developers with a 10, 20-year track record in the industry, AAA titles under their belt, who are hovering in the sidelines waiting to recruit people. Um, and I'll follow that up in a little while with, with what they're looking to recruit. So X-Play 2011, then. Scaling up from the Guild Hall a little bit, uh, we've managed to secure the National Marine Aquarium. So we have four floors of the National Marine Aquarium, and there's a conference with representation from TIGA, um, representing uh, the games industry to academia. So we have the uh, keynote from TIGA. Um, we also have a pervasive, pervasive Media Studio are sponsoring it. They're from Bristol. We have the Centre for Digital Entertainment. They're from Bournemouth. Um, our own formation zone from the university and the INETs for the Southwest Creative Industries. So there's significant funding and backing going into this, um, and our faculty have also um, put forward some sponsorship to make the event possible. So there's a conference, so there's four or five very respectable speakers coming down, so great for developers to find out what's, what's going on in the sector. 
Um, there's a game jam, so we're asking people to put their money where their mouth is and actually develop something in a very short period of time, which is something that we've run year on year at the London Expo, but we'd like to see it happening here. And there's a boot camp. Um, the boot camp is an enterprise boot camp, and it's led by the um, former Business Link or the INET brokers for the South West. So we've got some very experienced business people and entrepreneurs coming in to give Dragon's Den style injection into developers and small companies in the region. So we've managed to identify 20 companies, and those 20 companies will basically be locked in a room for two days um, and will be given a big skills injection and a 12-month package of um, business development and growth. So we're delighted that we've, we've been able to nurture this um, internally on a much smaller scale. Um, all the programs within computing are benefiting from a new development studio. This is an agile cross-platform self-managed and user-centered space where we can do lots of things that we can't necessarily do um, without having that self-managed environment. Um, and we're using that both as an enterprise space and a learning and educational space. So we've also got continuing pref professional development delivery in there from Nicholas Altram. Um, so it's business facing. It's a nice, crisp, professional environment. Um, so we're inviting these companies in um, and we're exposing students to live projects as, as a way of bootstrapping this industry and getting some engagement. Do interrupt me. I'm getting conscious my own voice is beginning to drag. Um, so we've also had some investment to create an interactive system studio. This is something that many people won't be aware of yet because we haven't done a formal public launch. We haven't done the branding. We haven't got a web presence. But basically, we're creating an interdisciplinary team. We're doing rapid prototyping. Um, we're investigating commercialization and proof of concept, which we've been doing informally for a couple of years now, um, and recruiting RAs and graduate developers to support that initiative. Um, so that's happening now, and there's, there's actually four positions advertised on the university pages as we speak. Um, the studio has also put in a £290,000 knowledge Trans, sorry, Euros, Knowledge Transfer Scheme with ICNM. ICNM is the International Centre for New Media in Salzburg. Um, and they have a network of 44 universities across Europe. So we're quite excited at the potential for that. And indeed the security group here hosted a visit from Hagenberg earlier in the year. And we've been building um, links across our programmes. But that's another significant opportunity that we're looking to exploit. Um, Centre for Digital Entertainment in Bournemouth and the Pervasive Media Studio in Bristol have both secured quite a lot of uh, recognition and AHRC investment, although they are doing development, mobile applications, and pushing growth and innovation in the sector. And I think it's very important that um, mainstream developers are actually aware of how the creative industries are pushing these things forward and not to miss the boat. Um, at the same time, these centres are all recruiting developers and graduates from computer science courses because um, they need the skills in order to develop and deliver these products and these innovations. So again, more opportunities for developers locally in the southwest. Um, the International Centre for New Media also run the World Summit Awards, World Summit Youth Awards. So these are very high profile awards for products, extensions, devices, services, Inevitably, they're technologically mediated, so they have software and they have a device um, that enables some kind of positive societal impact. Um, so the Youth Summit Awards is a fantastic opportunity to um, get a launch pad. So if we were looking at London Expo, Europe Awards, um, local opportunities, we're equally in entitled to be putting in for these World Summit Awards. Um, I'm actually on the jury for the European Awards, and I've been invited to be on the World Summit Awards jury, um, which is fantastic because it allows me to have an overview of everything that's going on, but it also puts me in an interesting position that I end up as a jack of all and a master of none. Um, yeah. So back to the meat of the talk then. So what are the opportunities for developers locally? Well, obviously, I think we're all welcome and have the opportunity to sign up for this X-Play event. Um, network with the top 20 identified companies in the region who are seen as bootstrapping the economy. Um, 
There's significant collaborative funding bits, and I'll give you a little bit of detail for those of you that haven't seen that before. Um, we could also, as a group, be providing um, continuing professional development and upskilling for these businesses or these companies or these independent developers who maybe have been out on a limb um, and would like to get some recognition or get some qualifications. I've certainly noticed in our final year direct entrance, we have a number of students who are who actually have a five, ten year track record as a developer locally and have come to the university because they want to have some formal qualification and, and upskill. Um, proof of concept and investment, there's mechanisms within the university to support that um, and they go beyond the academics and students. There are initiatives that fund specifically partnerships between the commercial and educational sector and I'll cover some of those in a second. Um, obviously initiate events and that's what we're trying to do with X-Play and attract investment. If we've got the key players in the sector coming to this end of the country then investment should follow. Nearly there, two more slides. Um, so opportunities for de developers number two then. There's the creative industries I net that had 3.3 million investments specifically for the southwest and this year it's being divided up into specific categories and it's targeting um, developers, creatives who are using web, mobile, internet technologies and as a result there are significant partnership opportunities for those with the skills to deliver the products and services that that sector require. There's also the microelectronics INET which is potentially more interesting from our computer science or electronics side of things, the thingification um, iThings or our iFridge. The Technology Strategy Board has just released £5 million, uh, again targeted at the Internet of Things, and there's a call for bids. Um, to have any hope of securing some of that funding, we obviously need to have some good, strong partnership arrangements in place to have the credibility that we can deliver. So, again, I think the BCS is in a really strong position to help some of that activity progress. Um, as we kind of hinted at before, crowdsourcing. Is everyone familiar with crowdsourcing? Getting a few nods? Yes. Yeah, so crowdsourcing is becoming more and more established where you can contribute a dollar, two dollars through your PayPal account, etc. in something that you would quite like to have developed. So brand owners and marketing campaigns are getting more astute as to how they can use crowdsourcing to develop products. But there's a fantastic source for indie developers who are looking at crowdsourcing specifically to target the development of innovative new games from the UK. Serious money for serious games. Again, most of these are phrases that if you Google these phrases, you'll come up with a funding opportunity. Um, so serious money for serious games is, is another one which I'll cover in a second. Obviously, flavour of the month is Unreal. Unreal Engine has been around for a long time. It's very well established. A uh, lot of industry demand for Unreal programmers or even Unreal scripters who can use Kismet. So they have a strong understanding of programming principles, but they can rapidly develop products for Unreal. My contacts in the industry are saying quite emphatically that they think the Unreal Engine will be around for at least another five years. It's very well established in the AAA studios. A lot of larger independent studios have been using it. Um, and obviously it can deploy to multiple devices now, so it makes it a very attractive uh, platform for um, expansion. And Connect, obviously hot topic. Um, had an email from a former student today who's working um, on a project with Microsoft saying the uh, Microsoft Fun Lab is actively looking for hot properties. Hot properties being tech demos that show potential for the Connect that Microsoft Fun Lab will basically buy at a knockdown price and then, can I say that? We'll edit this later. Um, that Microsoft can um, help commercialise in a productive way within the sector. There you go. Um, good. Um, obviously Unity is well established platform C Sharp, so again bootstrapping, less, 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 less depth in terms of the programming requirements to deliver a product um, and also deploying to multiple devices. Um, and Corona, I'm sure our younger developers are familiar with Corona that allows you to develop to iOS and Android devices fairly quickly using a derivative of BASIC. And I guess that will satisfy some of the older members of the audience as well. So your skills match to Corona will allow you to start to churn out applications and compete with those 13 and 14 year olds that are using Stencilworks. 
so uh, the financial things then. Uh, there's been some great commentary out there at the moment. Technology Strategy Board is innovateuk.org. If you're interested in tracking down a slice of that five million. Um, serious Games for Serious Money. Again, it's a knowledge transfer network and it's through Innovate. Indie Games Funding, fantastic resource to identify five or six different sources of crowdsourcing, revenue generating opportunities, portals with, with very generous ad revenue uh, models such as Mochi. Um, obscure.co.uk, suitably obscure title for a suitably obscure but highly valuable resource that you may not have come across. Um, and again, the innovate.org competitions. Um, there's another funding pot that's open to developers or collaborations between businesses, commercial entities, and academics. So, I just wanted to wrap up with um, this, and then you can ask me lots of awkward questions. Um, this is a quote from Brenda Laurel, who was working at Xerox Park, and then wrote a book called Computers as Theatre. And the book was intended for developers who weren't necessarily understanding UXD or UI. Um, user experience design or user interface design. So you've all read it already. Um, thinking interfaces, thinking too small, designing human computer experience isn't about building a better desktop, it's about creating imaginary worlds that have a special relationship to reality. Worlds in which we can extend, amplify and enrich our own capacities to think, feel and act. Um, well, that's just a game, isn't it? That's an academic way of saying a game. Um, and the Internet of Things, I would argue, is also a game. And if you want people to engage in the Internet of Things, you need to gamify those processes. And there are some fantastic portals and platforms out there that claim to deliver the set of services that you might require as an independent developer to gamify any product. Um, and again, if you just trawl for gamify, you will find those, those resources. I'm not advertising anybody. Okay, thank you very much. Dan. Thank you.